three and go, please. Hey, everybody, this is Jason Fabok, artist on Batman, The Button, and you're watching Game Infinity Watch. Hey, everybody, Game Infinity Watch coming to you with another awesome, I hope you guys think it's awesome video here on Game Infinity Watch YouTube channel. You might notice that there's this massive amount of books here next to me. So I figured that this would be a great time since it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving everybody. I hope everybody eats a lot of pecan pie because pecan pie is better than pumpkin pie. That's right, I said it and it's a fact. So since it's Thanksgiving and I hope everybody's having a good uh, time with friends and family and loved ones and stuff like that, I wanted to talk about maybe some books that are my favorite, that I'm thankful for. Um, so I kind of, you guys can kind of consider this a uh, Gabe Infinity Watch top favorite books from his collection. These are actually ones that I am very thankful for. So let's go ahead and let's get started in this mix. All right, so first off, these are in no particular order, you know, please don't get upset that I have one book above the other. This isn't a top 10 or top, I think I got like 15 books. This isn't like a, a listing or <clears throat> any kind of bracket thing or anything like that. These are just books I pulled off my shelf that I absolutely love. So, let's go ahead and get this started off with the top one on the stack is... Next Wave Fear Agents, or Agents of Hate. I don't know where that came from. Agents of Hate. This is the complete collection in one single trade paperback. This is written by one of my favorite writers of all time, Warren Ellis, and art by Stuart Eminem. It's a wonderful, wonderful, outrageous, uh, very irrelevant, just... I think Warren Ellis was told, just do what you want. We're going to leave you alone. Choose whatever characters that you want to choose and just fuck around with them as much as you want. And with that, you got Next Wave. This consists of characters like the Captain, Tabby. So Captain Tabby, who is Boom Boom from uh, X-Force. Uh, Monica Rambeau. You have Machine Man or uh, Aaron Stack. And Elsa Bloodstone, all on one crazy team, doing crazy things, having crazy antics and everything like that. It's not, it's pretty, it's really hard and not very often do I read a book and I laugh out loud. But this book has consistently shown me how funny comic books can be. This is a great book. Top pick right there. Next Wave, Agents of Hate. Next up is the first omnibus out of the uh, pile, Uncanny X-Force. And of course, this is a, a pretty big book. Um, it's hard to find these days, and when you do find it, it's fairly expensive. Luckily, I got this and it first came out, so I got it for dirt cheap. Anyways, enough of that. Uh, this is written by Rick Remender. Artist, uh, lots and lots of top-notch artists like Jerome Opeña. Uh, I'm trying to think of more that are in here. I know Phil Noto did some work in here. Uh, Isak Ribic, uh, Philip Tan, Mark Brooks, and uh, Billy Tucci um, all contributed great things to this book. This is essentially uh, Wolverine's uh, secret hit squad of uh, X-Men characters that he handpicked for uh, tough jobs. So this spun right out of um, the... X-Force Kill Murder Squad book. Um, but this is such a consistently beautiful book. The first storyline in here, which is one of my favorites, it's all about a Apocalypse and them hunting down Apocalypse. Uh, a lot of this series actually deals a lot with Apocalypse and Archangel kind of dealing with being possessed and kind of taken over and controlled by Apocalypse for so long and the mental anguish that he deals with that. Um, <clears throat> if you can't tell from the cover, you get Wolverine, Psylocke, um, Phantom X, I uh, brain farted on his name, sorry, and Archangel, and uh, Deadpool. Is Deadpool even on this cover? Deadpool's on this cover over here. 
So this is the where you get like that gray suit Deadpool. That's like one of my favorite Deadpools. It comes out of this storyline. So Uncanny X Force. This collects one through thirty-five, five point one. After back when Marvel's doing all those stupid point ones, uh, nineteen point one. Yay, another stupid point one. And material from from Wolverine: Road to Hell number one. So all new Wolverine saga and X Men Spotlight. So great book here, fantastic book. I love this. Uh, I haven't opened this one yet. I owned all the singles. It was a part of the great comic purge. I don't have the singles anymore. But one day I'm gonna open this back up and revisit that storyline. Um, next up, Chew. Chew is a great book from that came out in Image Comics. There's a total, I want to say a little more than 60 issues consisted totally of, uh, of Chew. This is the first absolute. I do have all three now. Uh, written by uh, John Lehman and art by a newcomer at the time, uh, Rob Guillory. This is a story about Tony Chu, who is a detective but is a different kind of detective because this takes place in a world where chicken is outlawed because the bird flu legitimately happened and wiped out the population of most poultry out there. So he works for the FDA. He's a detective for the FDA. And this book is also another funny book that, again, I said it's really hard to kind of find funny books that make you laugh out loud. This definitely makes you laugh out loud um, it consists of stories based around food crimes um, because Tony Chu has a special ability that whatever he eats, he can see the entire life of that thing he ate. So there's things in here where he has to uh, taste blood or I guess fight a guy who can make um, weapons out of butter. <laughs> uh, crazy fun things like that. But this is such a consistently great book every issue out of that 60 plus run was fantastic so shoot highly recommended book all right one of my absolute all-time favorites if this was going to be a top 10 top 5 book or list or anything like that the infinity gauntlet would 100 percent be on that list this is the first Marvel event that was a huge cosmic event and was the first Marvel event that I read as a kid and this is the book that cemented me into being a comic book fan for the rest of my life. So you can thank this book for me being around on this YouTube channel to talk to you guys about comics and omnibus and things like that. Uh, this is of course the story that is being kind of I'm going to say more than likely loosely based upon in the upcoming Avengers Infinity War movie or movies. Uh, but this is the story of Thanos gathering the six Infinity Gems, making the Infinity Gauntlet, and completely wiping out half of all life in the universe, while at the same time beating down the Avengers and all of Marvel's top tier powerhouses without breaking a sweat. So, great book. This uh, omnibus collects everything involved within uh, Infinity Gauntlet. You have the Thanos Quest sagas, all the uh, Silver Surfer books, all of the kind of just ancillary titles that really didn't have a whole lot to do with the storyline itself, like Hulk and Doctor Strange and books like that. But it all tells a complete tale, thankfully. This is all one complete omnibus. And if my house was on fire, this would be one of the books that I would get, grab and try and save. Next up, one of my favorite, great, greatest stories I think ever written, and that is Transmetropolitan by Warren Ellis again. That makes him twice on this list. So I didn't realize that till now, but Warren Ellis and Derek Robertson on the art. This is about, this takes place kind of in the future, not kind of, but definitely takes place in the future and is kind of loosely based around Hunter S. Thompson, who was um, a journalist back in the early 70s and 80s who ran into a lot of, probably even the 60s, I want to say too. I don't know his story that well. 
But it's, it's about a, a journalist who just runs into a bunch of uh, political figures who are just pieces of crap, which is pretty relevant to today. Um, and is in a world, he takes place in a place called The City, that The City has no name, it's just called The City, almost kind of like The Tick, it's just called The City. They don't know what year it is anymore, they just kind of just stop uh, keeping track. But this book is great. Uh, it's not super political, it is at first, but it's not, you should think this way, or this is the way you should look at life, kind of political story or anything like that. Uh, it's very, uh, since it's futuristic, it's very futuristic tech and technology. Uh, things like Twitter actually was kind of first, not first introduced, but they have Twitter in here before Twitter was even around. Um, internet being everywhere. Uh, people being able to carry around things that control, or that, I'm sorry, that record video and take pictures, kind of like how we do with our cell phones today. Things like that, but this is all late 90s. So this is way before iPhones and cell phones really became a part of our society as it is today. So, again, Channel Metropolitan, there's three Omnibus, I'm sorry, Absolutes coming out. There's only two out so far. We are all anxiously, anxiously waiting for that third one. So DC, Vertigo, Warren Ellis, Derek Robertson, whoever out there, let's get that started. Let's, let's pump that out already, please. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Scout. This is a, a smaller, is this oversized? Yeah, this is an oversized hardcover uh, series that consists of, now I gotta look again, that's five, five hardcovers for Scout. This is written by Jason Aaron. Yes, that Jason Aaron, the one that's doing uh, Mighty Thor and who's done things like, uh, what was that Marvel series he did? Original Sin. And he's doing Southern Bastards. So this is a, this is about a man returning back to his Indian reservation. Uh, this all takes place on Indian reservation with a casino. And it's all about the corrupt, really just bad living environment. And how just kind of, you know, basically ghetto. Like, if you know ghettos, Indian reservations are just as bad, if not worse. So it's this hard, gritty really kind of dirty storyline about a man returning back home to discover that his Indian reservation is kind of in this political turmoil over its chief and some of the members who control and run the local casino. That's super vague and might be semi-inaccurate because I don't want to give away the super details about this book, um, especially about the main uh, the main character here because there's, there's some reveals that I don't want to get into on this video and ruin it for you guys. But Scout, um, Jason Aaron, RM Guerra, they're also they team back up to do uh, The Goddamned. So if you like The Goddamned, you like that art style, you definitely want to check this out. Scout, five hardcovers, amazing, just gritty, nasty book that is out there and I love it. Very thankful for this book. X-Men on the bus. This is uh, what the second on the bus in the group so far or in this list? No, it's the third. Uh, this is the volume two by Jim Lee. I don't have the first volume, but no big deal. I can live my life to its fullest without having that on the bus. But this is, this is my favorite X-Men kind of stuff. It starts around this time period. Because this is when you get the time period of X-Men number one by Jim Lee and Chris Claremont. Um, first appearance of Omega Red and all that, you know, this really great long shot story here. So this era of the X-Men is where I fell in love with the X-Men. Of course, because when I first started reading comics, it was around this era. But what's great about this omnibus is the extras. It has some of my favorite extras ever in comics is in this omnibus right here. Let me kind of flip to the back a little bit and give you guys an example of what I am talking about. There's interviews, early artwork, uh, other covers that Jim Lee did. But what I wanted to get into, and it really makes this, let me just kind of skip ahead because it doesn't matter. I don't need to show you all of this. What it is, the greatest thing about this omnibus is it collects fully all 100 
of the Jim Lee X-Men trading cards, front and back. I love those trading cards. I actually did an unboxing of those trading cards live on my channel. You can check it out. That was about a year ago. Um, but you get all of the um, trading cards, all the cool bits and information on the trading cards. Like I said, you get the front and the back. You also, in this omnibus, get some cool covers. And there, where else was there? There's something else I wanted to show you guys that made me just say that this is one of my favorite omnibus and I love it. Is you get a fold out posters. I don't think there's ever been any other fold out posters in any omnibus before. So, this is the recolored version of those four covers from Jim Lee. And here is the original. Let me try and slide this over and give you guys a good look. So, you get that fold out poster. And then also, I think there's one more fold out poster. There it is. Where is it? I see it right here. So there's a whole section of fold out posters. And you get this long ways fold out poster as well. So, and there's a recolored version of it on the other side too. I wish I owned, I wish I could just rip this out and hang these up. That'd be super cool. But I wouldn't want to do that to design this. Moving forward, uh, Punisher Max by Jason Aaron again. He's there's another entry in this video by Jason Aaron. This is the basically the last uh, story of Punisher in the Max universe. Um, Steve Dillon did the art, the late great Steve Dillon. So if you're a fan of like you know Garth Ennis's Punisher Max or any of the uh, that stuff that Steve Dillon did, this is all tied into that as well. Um, great, great story, great, fantastic art, and it's probably one of the hardest hitting, just gut wrenching Punisher stories that's that's out there. Um, I remember reading this in singles when it was coming out. Um, there's a hiatus, and I remember rereading everything again, and it just every time it just blows me away. There's a fantastic uh, bullseye story in here, and it shows how crazy wicked bullseye is, where he he follows. Uh, Frank Castle around, sleeps in his old hideouts and safe houses and things like that to try and get into his head. Crazy stuff like that. So Punisher Max by Jason Aaron and Steve Dillon. Also on my list of thankful omnibus. Deadpool Volume 1 by Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis. One of my all-time favorite books. Um, I, this is one of my favorite X-Men series of all time. This is my version of Deadpool that I like. Uh, some of the newer Deadpool stuff, or some of the stuff that took place after this, wasn't to my liking. And I kind of just kind of fell off the, uh, the Deadpool train. But I remember this is, when this was coming out, I could not wait for the next issue every single time it came out. I remember begging my friend that he needed to read my copies of the book, too. So, Deadpool... Um, this is the, what does this collect? Uh, 1 through 33. Um, number 1 and number 0. Daredevil Deadpool Annual 97. Deadpool and Death Annual 98. Uh, Baby's First Deadpool. Amazing Spider-Man 47 and 611. And material from Deadpool 900. So, lots and lots of good reading in here. Great book. Um, this is... The series where Deadpool, everything that we know about Deadpool now and that's being kind of brought about in the movies kind of came out of this book. Um, things like Blind Owl, Weasel, um, Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, um, his kind of attitude about being a cancer survivor, things like that all came out of here. I love this book so much that I own a piece of original art from the second issue. So this is... A book that is near and dear to me. I love it so much. And yes, if my house is on fire, I would pull this out of the fire. Or pull it out before the fire took over. Uh, a little bit off the charts, but I'm going to talk about Greg uh, Thompson's Blankets. 
Uh, this is a beautiful, well done hardcover. This is a slightly older book, um, 2004. Uh, it won like a handful of uh, Harvey Awards. Not a book that gets mentioned um, as much as it should be. This should be on everybody's recommendation list um, for blankets. It's, it's look how thick and huge this book is, and it's all about um, a young boy's um, growing up in a super Christian household, um, being a vegetarian, that kind of living lifestyle and household, falling in love for the first time, dealing with breakups and makeups and, and, and things like that. But of course, with it being Craig Thompson, the art is this beautiful brush, ink brush cartooning that I've never seen anybody else ever be able to uh, recreate or even come near before. Great, great book. This is the kind of book that, um, since this is fall, it's a great kind of to sit down outside and read fall book. Beautiful book. I am thankful, thankful 100% for this book and the messages in it about love and getting over relationships um, and just how to be a good person really comes out of this book. Gotham Academy. Again, another book that does not get mentioned as much as it should be. This is another great, fantastic, I'm going to move my mic a little bit closer. I'm going to make sure you guys hear me because <laughs> this book is amazing. Um, another book that just does not get the love it deserves and that it, it should be getting. Um, Gotham Academy. This is the first trade paperback of the series that collects one through six. This is written by Becky Cloonan, um, Brandon Fletcher, and art by Carl Keschel. And this is beautiful. I think Carl Keschel was, had to have been like a Disney cartoonist or something because his art in here is superb. It's beautiful storytelling, beautiful, wonderful artwork. Uh, everything around, like the coloring, the inking, um, the kind of the, the, I think it's computer generated textiles on like the clothes and like her skirt and things like that is just great. It's a story about Gotham Academy. It's a prep school and it's about uh, these two young girls, uh, Maps and uh, Silverlock. I forgot her first name. Damn it. Uh, Olive. That's it. Olive. I had to read the back real quick. Um, and they're kind of just. Uh, it's almost like Scooby-Doo, Stranger Things, but it all takes place in this Gotham Academy boarding school. There's, not, there's very little to no Batman in here, which is a good thing, so don't freak out about that. It's a good thing. And this is about how uh, her life and how out of control it can get for a young girl and how she can kind of deal with that and how she has friends and loved ones to support her. And also, like I said, it's kind of Scooby Dooish, so it's a little bit of like kind of sci fi, uh, not sci fi, uh, supernatural in the school. And how living on your own, basically, in a big boarding school, how that can kind of, so it's kind of Harry Potter esque, and how just your mind can kind of just see things that aren't there, but maybe they are really there with ghosts and ghost stories and things like that. So, great book again. Death of Superman. Again, one of my favorite books to have come out in the 90s. Another book that kind of solidified me in the idea of being a comic book lover and collector. Um, this this is... The date of the actual Death of Superman was released, I want to say, the anniversary of that was about a week ago. So this is all kind of ties into to this video because this is about a week ago. And it kind of ties into also Doomsday Clock. So if you read Doomsday Clock, there's some dates in Doomsday Clock that coincide with the death of Superman. Really kind of cool stuff. But this is the uh, second version of the Omnibus. They did another version before that wasn't as good. And I heard the binding was kind of awful and stuff like that. But this collects everything. It's the death of Superman. It's the, friend, it's the uh, funeral for a friend. The return. All of that great stuff is in here. It's a super thick Omnibus. But this is a story that I think really changed the path of comics and collecting and comic book stories and how uh, the media drive, has been able to drive sales of comics. 
I remember trying to get this book and I couldn't get it because I didn't pre-order the black bag version. So uh, 30 years later, almost, I bought a black bag version probably about a year or so ago. No, not 30 years, 25 years? How long has it been? That's been a while. Either way, check this out. Uh, last couple of books uh, are by Brian Michael Bendis, Avengers Disassemble. This is one of my uh, go-to books whenever I tell somebody if, they, if, they, if you want a solid starting point, uh, Avengers Disassemble is that book. Last but certainly not least, again, another Bendis book. His run on Daredevil. This is the first omnibus for uh, Daredevil. Um, his run on Daredevil helped bring Daredevil back to kind of Frank Miller-esque, um, I don't want to say lifestyle, but just kind of that era that Frank Miller created when he was doing Daredevil. It's back to it being kind of dark and gritty and street level all over again. Um, it, it kind of lost that path after Frank Miller left and throughout the 90s and, and, and things like that with the armor and... As cool as the armor was, I thought uh, the stories just weren't super exciting for a Daredevil story. But again, this is back to him being a blind um, attorney, street level, uh, dealing with things like Echo, dealing with his identity getting uh, possibly leaked and revealed to the press. But there is no better recent Daredevil than here with Bendis and Alex Maleev on the art. This first omnibus, does it say what it collects? Uh, 16, 16 through 19, and this uh, 26 through 50, and 56 through 60. So there's some gaps in the story and stuff like that, but this is a beautiful book that I'm thankful to have in my collection, and I'm thankful that it, Bendis is on Daredevil and gave us such a sweet heartfelt version of daredevil all right so that is it everybody uh thank you very much for endearing this video hit that subscribe button hit the like button hit the thumbs up and i hope everybody enjoys their thanksgiving tell me down below what books are you thankful for do you have a favorite book in there that you that may possibly change the way you thought about life or anything like that but let's go ahead and talk about that down in the comments, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.